All right, we are recording. We're on autofocus. This is take two. I'm trying it with center focus so that maybe it'll focus where I'm trying to point this at a camera. And I'm going to bring it up. You can see that we've got bamboo staves in the ground. And where do we get the bamboo staves from, you ask? And there you can see on the left side of the screen, I'll bring it more in. There's the edge of our office bedroom. You're looking at a, ba a bamboo grove. We cut it down when it gets mature. We uh, cut it up and we use it for any number of things. And the beauty of it is if we cut that all down, in seven years it would replace itself. It's grass, G-R-A-S-S. -S. Basically that's what bamboo is. And it grows nice and it grows tall. And this is giant bhutan. And it is really, 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 really what you'd want to call tall. I can't get it all in. I'll bring it back down. That That's big stuff. That bhutan will grow if the season's right and the weather's right. You'll get that stuff growing at about a foot a day, 12 inches a day. I'm going to bring it around. Yeah, we use sheet metal when needed. We planted this there. At, uh, that's a, a, a fir tree. And we planted it to be a Christmas tree. The live one. Uh, we forgot to top it. And it's now... I won't go up, it'll make you dizzy. But it's about 60 feet. 20 meters, somewhere in between those two numbers. So we don't decorate it for Christmas anymore. Not unless you're going to wear a parachute. But as I bring this around, you can see that's our... That's a pretty tree. It's got gorgeous flowers in it. We keep it trimmed down low. Uh, once a year we cut it down. And it comes back and gives us those incredible flowers every time. Now I'm going to bring it down. We're out of focus. There, we're in focus. In the background, you can see we've built fences uh, with our bamboo. Uh, in the foreground, you can see a low-level trellis. It's actually over a hole in the ground that was going to be a, another pond, but we never got around to filling it up with water. And in time, good old Mother Earth decided she'd fill it up with soil. So now there's enough soil down there. We grow squash. It comes up, goes on the trellis. It's easier to pick. It's a good deal all around. I'll continue to bring this around. And there you go. That should be in focus. And those bamboo slats are... Originally, they kept the, the geese off a little plot that we have put in that gets good sunlight. In a yard like ours, you don't just grow in one area. You grow wherever the sun comes through the trees. And that's a nice plot of land. We grow beans in there and other stuff. And we fence it off with bamboo, of course. We could use metal, but why? And here, we have a... Uh, Triple trellis, let's call it. The ladies built that in a couple of days. The hard part was digging the hole in the ground for the post. Now, every, all of it's out of bamboo. and They use a little wire to tie it together, but 98% renewable bamboo. Plastic pots. Why? Because nobody around here makes clay pots. And they're heavy and expensive, so we use plastic. We aren't fanatics, folks. We just try to make it a little better as we go along. And that triple trellis supports beautiful flowers. I'm going to pull it up a bit. There. Now you get a nice picture of the flowers. And in the foreground is a red something going up. That's a red palm tree. It's only uh, three meters tall now. It'll get a bit bigger as the years go by. On the left side of the trellis, I'm going to bring it down. 
and into focus. There you go. That's not a ball. That is a coconut. But you say coconuts are green, and they are until they get old and dry out. There aren't as many coconut pickers around as there used to be. It's actually requires a very particular type of person. They're going to have the strongest size in the world to climb those trees. Uh, aren't many left to do it because you get up there, it's rainy, there's snakes in the trees, it's hard work and you don't get paid much. So ours get left on the tree. Now sometimes they fall down and they're green and the ladies will pick those up and take them home. Uh, there goes our dog. Yeah. Uh, other times they stay up in the tree until they get old and brown. Fall down inside them. The coconut meat. The, a coconut's made out of tr three layers. There's the outer green skin. There's the inner husk that looks... I don't know what it looks like. Uh, a really funny woven mat, maybe you could call it. Very thick, uh, protects it when it falls. And inside that is another shell with white, what they call meat. I don't know what a botanist would call it. Uh, botanist, is that the right word? I don't know. Anyway, there's white meat inside. When it's green, you take it out, you eat it just the way it is if you want to. Coconut pickers often take out pieces of it and have it with their lunch. But if you leave it till the coconut gets like that, it's dried inside. You put it in a large scale industrial size grater. And, ah, oh, there's our dog. Let's see if I can get it. Oh yeah, look at that. Can he move or what? Is it gorgeous? All right, he's out of range now. Back to the coconut. Uh, and there's our other dog. That's Chaco. Um, the meat inside a dried coconut, you shred it. Oh, 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 there, there they are. They're not going to fight, but they're having fun, sort of. I'm not sure that Rusty thinks it's, or Chaco thinks it's fun, but Rusty is practicing his stalking. Ah, okay. He didn't think it's fun. He's warning them off. They'll, they'll have sort of strange fun. Okay. Yeah. That's a beautiful Doberman and a great looking mutt. Off they go. Surely one of our workers is down there. They think they're going to get a walk. Anyway, uh, the coconut works when it's young and fresh, when it's green, uh, when it's old and brown. If you know what you're doing, it's like the um, natives on the west coast of Canada. When the salmon come in and go up the streams, they'll catch them outside of the river and they'll cook that one way. They'll catch them going up the river and cook them another way and prepare them. And when their spawning is done, in the old days, they would collect those fish and prepare them in a different way. Uh, very little was wasted in the old ways. And the only trouble, of course, is that um, I'm going to finish this with a nice shot of that because it looks pretty. The old ways are gone. Uh, I mean, I have to choke and laugh when I see uh, in the, the Dakotas when they're arguing against pipelines and oil consumption and how it destroys their land, young bloods that used to, in centuries gone past, ride horses and go on raids and hunting parties and prove their manhood by counting coup, well, they show up now with their leather jackets and colors riding their Harleys polluting the atmosphere and the steel going into the Harleys of course is, comes from the world's most pollution intense industry which is 
iron steel making, metal working, and they protest pipelines that brings them the fuel for their Harleys. Credibility is a little lacking in that. Uh, and you see that a lot, not just with the bikers in Dakota, but look at our world leaders that showed up on their left COP26 flying in personal jets. Eh, you know, you can build an argument, I guess, that, well, they're leaders of nations and countries and they need to, blah, 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 blah. On the other hand, they're high-tech states and they all could have done it video conferencing, but they didn't. They had to go there and look important and see people eye to eye to save the world. And what came out of it? Nothing but smoke and mirrors. There is no country that has gone home and is right now putting anything into action from COP26 that will stop or help to stop global warming. They've all said, we're gonna make a plan and in the future, this is going to happen. Yeah, well, there's an expression in Zion, lum lum. And while I won't give an English translation because this is rated G, you can translate that out to any number of true vulgarities if you wish to. Or you can just say it means nonsense. I think it's probably better to go with vulgarities, so I won't. But I am down to 81% power. Time to cut this off. It's been 11 minutes. So have a good day, folks. And that's our part of our attempt at sustainability. Is it 100%? No. Will it save the world? Not on its own. But if everybody, all of us humans, were to make a similar small effort, and maybe all of you already are, or maybe most of you are, or some of you are, but the more of us that make the little effort, we're going to end up with a huge effort and then we can tell our leaders who are only interested in their own money and their own wealth and their own power to go stuff it because we will have saved the planet. Ah, uh, Lord know what Chaco's got in his mouth now. Oh, it's an old rag. Okay, that's rusty, not Chaco. My mistake. Anyway, folks, that's all. Uh, you have a good day and work on sustainability. Bye for now.